Let's go over the problems we went over in class and count for the uh, exam number three. And I might have to divide this uh, video into two or three parts in order for uploading the video a little easier. The first question has to do with accounting and economic profit. Now this part, accounting and economic profit, is not in the textbook and we weren't over in class, so it's important that you understand this concept from the lectures, given that there's no real reference in the textbook, unfortunately, for this important topic. The question reads, John uses funds from a savings account to pay off his equipment loan. The interest rate John pays on the equipment loan is the same as the interest rate he can earn on the savings account. And then the question says, John's accounting profit is what and the economic profit is what? Well, in order to make this a lot more uh, palpable, uh, I decided to do a numerical example of the problem. So let's say the revenue that John makes is actually $100. And let's say that the cost of the loan, which is also the money that he takes out of the savings account to pay off the loan, is $1,000. And let's say that the interest he's going to get, both on the loan and on the savings account, is actually 3%. So the interest on the loan that he pay off a month or a year, the time period is not relevant as long as it's the same for both the savings account and the interest loan. The interest on the loan is thirty dollars, and and they and that will be the same money that he will earn interest if he kept the money in the savings account. So the interest earned in the savings account of a thousand dollars is thirty dollars. So now we actually have enough information to come up with the revenue, accounting profits, and economic profits. So let's see what the revenue costs and profits are before he takes the money out of a savings account. Well, let's say he makes a hundred dollars in revenue. The accounting costs are thirty dollars. That's why he pays off. That's what he pays every month or every year. That is the payment on the loan at $30. It's an accounting cost. So the accounting profits is $70. $100 in revenue minus the cost is $70. Now, there's no opportunity cost before he takes the money out of its savings account. So the economic profit and the accounting profits are the same, $70. Now he takes the money out of a savings account. How do the costs and benefits change? Well, the revenue is still $100 because it hasn't changed. Uh, it's only a cost of change. The accounting costs are now zero because he's not he pay off the loan, so he's not going to have to pay that payment of 3%. So the accounting costs are now zero. That means that the accounting profits are now $100. $100 in revenue. Uh, there's no cost, so the accounting profits is $100. The opportunity costs, on the other hand, are $30 because the money he was earning on the savings account that he's now not going to earn because he put that money on the business is the alternative for that money that he has. In other words, if he uses the money in his business, he won't be able to earn money on the savings account. So clearly that's an opportunity cost. And the opportunity cost is the interest he was earning on the money, which is $30. So the economic profit is the revenue, $100, minus the opportunity cost, $30. So the economic profit is $70. So now we have enough information to answer the question. The accounting profits actually goes up from $70 to $100. And the economic profit stays the same. So I'll give you the answer to the question. If the interest rate is the same on both the loan and the savings account, after he takes off, he takes the money out of the savings account to pay off the loan, the accounting profit goes up, but the economic profit stays the same. All right, the second question has to do with the amount of output to produce. Say you earn some extra money by offering tutoring service for Econ 102. Currently, you're spending five hours a week in your tutoring business, and you're charging five dollars an hour. Should you increase the number of hours a week you dedicate to your tutoring business? Now, if you have to answer this question, the be the only way to answer is by comparing the extra money that the last person brought to you versus the extra cost you incur when you actually tutor that person. Unfortunately, this question is only telling you one of those things. It's telling you the extra money that you're getting or that you actually charge the last person you saw. But it doesn't really tell you the extra cost. So if you don't have that information, then you cannot answer the problem. So the problem is really C depends. We need more information to answer. And this question works a lot better when you present it the first time in class is so you understand that you need both the extra cost and the extra revenue in order to make a decision about how many units you produce. So for instance, if this was the information, then you can decide. Now here's the same problem. Say you earn some extra money by offering tutoring service for Econ 102, but now you're telling you that the money you're charging, which is $10 an hour, and you're also telling you how much it costs you to tutor one hour. 
and this is mostly the cost of your time. It's five dollars. Then to increase profit, should you do what? And, uh, you're going to assume that the tutoring market is perfectly competitive. That's an important assumption because what that means is that you cannot change a price. The price is whatever the market decides. So if the last person brought you $10 and it only cost you $5, uh, that's the same, and that's the same thing that's going to happen if you increase your clients by one more tutor person, then clearly you should increase and see more clients because the more clients, if you see another clients, that extra client is going gonna, is gonna to pay you $10 and it only costs you $5 to tutor that client. So you're making $5 in profit every time you see that client. So you should increase your clients as long as your price, the money you receive from each client, is more than the cost to provide the service to each client. So this is the idea that you know how much output to produce if you want to maximize profits if your marginal revenue, which for a competitive firm is the price, is the same as your marginal cost. If your marginal cost is larger than your marginal revenue, again, which in a competitive firm is the price, if your marginal cost is, is higher than your price, then you should reduce output because if you reduce output, you'll get rid of more costs than revenue and your profits go up. On the, on the other hand, if your marginal revenue, which again, competitive firm is the same as the price, is higher than your marginal cost, then you, you should increase output because every time you increase output, you bring in more revenue than cost and your profits should go up. And you know that you're doing the best when your marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And again, for a perfectly competitive industry, since marginal revenue and price is the same, then the condition for margin maximum profits is price equals marginal cost. Okay, the second question has, is combining all these two things we have said with the idea of economic profit. So say you have the following. The salary you can make bartending is $10 an hour. The internet connection that you have to pay is $5 an hour. I should say $5 an hour. And you charge $12 an hour for your services in tutoring. Then you make how much money on either economic profit or accounting profits. Again, let's bring out a table to understand this a little more. So your revenue is $12, and this, these are all per hour. So your revenue is $12. Your accounting cost, which is the internet connection, is $5. And your opportunity cost is $10, and that is the money that you actually could be making bartending if you weren't um, have to tutor anyone. So accounting profits we get from taking the revenue taking the accounting cost from the revenue, and that the accounting costs are $5, minus the revenue is $7. And the economic profit we take by taking both the accounting cost and the opportunity cost. So since we have $15 on total opportunity cost plus accounting cost, and since we're only making $12 in revenue, our economic profit is really negative three. And that gives us the answer to the question before, which is B, you're making minus $3 in economic profit. Now, the next question is a little more um, involved. It said, after operating for two months, you continue to lose $3 in every hour you work. Now, your girlfriend um, gives you an advice. She, said, get, she tells you that you should get out of the tutoring business and go bartending instead because you're losing money every hour you work. And the question asks you, what do you think of your advice? And we're going to continue to assume that you have a one-year contract with the internet service. And let's say this is February, right? And your contract expires at the end of the year. And the bartending pays you $10. And also that you actually make $12 an hour for every person you tour. So let's again bring the table and see how the situation is. So these are the conditions of the problem. The salary you can make bartending is $10 an hour. The internet connection is $5 an hour. Well, you know that you have a one-year contract. You have to pay it no matter what, at least for the year. And the price of tutoring is $12 an hour. So how are the revenue, the costs, and the profits? Well, for tutoring, the revenue is $12. The accounting cost is five dollars because that is the uh, money you have to pay and this is really also a fixed cost and that's the main thing here is that it is an accounting company but it's also a fixed cost 
because you'll have to pay it no matter what, at least for the duration of the contract. And the opportunity cost, which is the money that you could be making if you, ha if you didn't have to tutor, uh, is a salary you can make bartending and that's $10. So your economic profit of tutoring is minus $3. What will be the economic profit if you decided to bartend? Well, you can make $10 bartending. You still have to pay the internet connection, at least for the duration of the year. So that will still be $5. Now your opportunity cost is actually $12 because that is the money you would not be able to make tutoring if you bartend. So in the end, you actually your economic profit if you go bartending is actually going to be uh, minus seven, which is a lot worse than if you tutor. And that clearly the difference is is uh, the main difference here is the fact that you are actually making more money tutoring than you are bartending. So clearly the advice that she gives you is not a good advice because even if you're having losses, the alternative that you have, since it gives you less money per hour, is actually worse. And as long as you have to pay, clearly this is the key, right? As long as you have to pay the internet connection, you con you're going to have to continue to pay that $5. Your decision is not really whether you cover all your costs, including your internet connection, but your decision is whether you cover your opportunity costs or the cost of your wage. In this case, it's $10. And clearly, you are covering that with the price you're getting. You're getting $12 an hour, your opportunity cost, which is really the the change, right? So that's, that's how it would change if you decide not to tutor. That's what you will save. It's actually $10. So after paying for your opportunity cost with the $12, you have at least $12, $2 to put into your fixed costs, which are $5. If you didn't have to, if you if you didn't work, you wouldn't have to pay the ten dollars in opportunity cost, but you also wouldn't have to make wouldn't make the twelve dollars, so you'll actually be a lot worse off. You wouldn't have those extra two dollars to pay off to your um, fixed costs. And the idea here is that we explain in class is that in the short term, that is when you have fixed costs, you don't have a decision whether to exit the industry. The only thing you can do is basically shut down and don't pay your variable costs, your usually your labor costs. So the decision whether to shut down or not is well if you can cover your variable costs, then you should not shut down because at least you have something. But if you cannot cover your variable costs, then you should shut down. In other words, if, if the revenue you had here per, per hour was actually $9, and your opportunity cost of working was $10, then it wouldn't make sense for you to work. Because if you worked, you would lose $1, and you have to add that cost to the actual money that you actually have to pay on fixed costs. OK. Now, this is kind of the, 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 the long-term question, right? So finally, you have decided to leave the tutoring services for good and not to renew your internet connection. Because clearly now that you have a choice of not renewing the contract, then you can get rid of that. And once you get rid of that, then it clearly it makes more sense for you to go bartending. You, you don't, you're not very good at tutoring, at least compared to, you're much better bartending than tutoring in that case. Now, if you assume most of the other tutoring services were facing the same revenue and cost, in other words, all the other firms were the same, then those tutoring services that same business would end up charging, and the answer here is a higher price. And we did a graph in class, and there's a graph in the textbook, and you can actually use a graph if you want, but you really don't need a graph in order to understand this. If, if there's a lot of people like you that are exiting the industry, then what is happening to the competition in the industry? Well, the competition is actually getting less competition. So the people who stay in business are facing less competition, so they can charge a higher price. And eventually, that's what, it will that's what it will allow those people to actually stay in business, the fact that the price will actually have to go up. Right? That's like, there's like you know, five tutoring services um, in the university. Let's say two of them are losing money. Three of them are just breaking even or you know, uh, making a little bit of money. If the two tutoring services that are losing money exit, then 
the number of people that wanted tutoring services had not changed, they will continue to look for tutors. And now those people who stay in business, so three tutoring services that stay in business, are have they're having more people wanting their services. So clearly they can charge a higher price. And eventually that is what allows the companies to act to that stay in business to stay in business. So when the when most of the companies are losing money, the price will tend to go up. When most of the companies are actually making money, then it's the reverse. The price will tend to go down as as more companies enter the industry, the demand stays the same. Every all the companies will have to split the demand of the consumers among more firms. So therefore there will be less profits for each person, so the price will have to go down. And eventually, you know that in equilibrium when, again, we said before, the profits are actually zero. Now, this question we did in class as a you know, practice problem, I think it's, uh, it's worth it that we go over the answer. You run a small firm to management consultants are offering you advice. The first one said that your firm is losing money on every unit that you produce. So the advice of the first person says is that in order to reduce your losses, they should recommend that you cut back production. The second person said that if your firm sells another unit, the price will more than cover your increased costs. So in order to reduce your losses, the second consultant recommends to you that you increase production. Now, as an economist, is it possible that both facts that the consultant offer are true? And second, which of the two is offering the best advice? So here's uh, a possible situation. Now, you have a firm in the horizontal axis you have quantity in the vertical axis you have the price since we have so many things actually this one is a little easier to to explain it with a little graph the marginal cost is upward sloping and the average cost is actually a u u form so look at what happens at quantity one well at quantity one you are actually in fact losing money on everything you produce because the price which is at you know b is less than the average cost. So you are in fact losing money on every unit you produce. So the first consultant is, is right. The second consultant tells you that the extra cost, the, or the cost of the, uh, the, the additional unit, is actually less than the price, than the revenue you get for every unit. So even though you're losing money, you should continue to produce. And it's also true. You notice that the marginal cost, the extra cost, is actually below the price which is the revenue you get for every unit. So both facts that the consultants are giving you are both true. You are in fact losing money on every unit you produce because the price, which is at B, is less than A, which is where the average cost is. And also the extra cost is actually less than the extra revenue. But the advice of the second consultant is the one that is relevant because in order to decide how much you produce, you should take into consideration the change in cost and not the average cost. Clearly, even though you're losing money, you should produce at a point in which your marginal cost equals your price. And that is point D, when price equals marginal cost. But the second, the second consultant is right, even though the facts that both consultants are giving you are actually true. Now the last question is the first question we presented in class, and this this one should be now easy after all the things we've said. Uh, say you earn some extra money by offering tutoring services. You're spending five hours a week in your tutoring business. If you work in a perfectly competitive market, then you would only continue with your business the way it is. In the long term, our profits are zero. And remember that if the profits are negative, you will exit the industry. If if you have positive profits, you will expand the your um, your business and other industries will enter this business and you know that you would you're doing the best thing you can or you're not have an incentive to do anything when your economic profits are zero and by now you should know that economic profits are zero doesn't mean that your accounting profits are zero your accounting profits are in fact positive and you are in fact paying yourself a salary that is at least as high as you will make working somewhere else so we'll do the second part, the monopoly part and the international trade part in a different video.